Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas, and we are going through the entire book of Revelation. Revelation has always been kind of one of those uh, maybe scary books or hard to understand books, or perhaps it's the book that you keep skipping because you don't want to read it incorrectly, right? And, and you feel like maybe before you begin, uh, maybe you just need to learn a little bit more or perhaps need a teacher or someone to hold your hand. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. And you can, you can start right here uh, with us. We're in the middle of Revelation chapter 13, or you can go back to the beginning, uh, find the other lessons that we've done, or if you're studying a particular passage in Revelation, you can always find the title of the YouTube video that, that matches the chapter where you're at. Uh, we more than, uh, you're more than welcome to, to read along with us. So grab your Bibles. We're looking at Revelation chapter 13. We're towards the bottom. We're at verse 11. That's where we left off. It says, Then I saw another beast rising out of the earth. Remember, this is John. He's having a vision. He's being shown images of the end of time. And right now, John says, I saw another beast. So we have the first beast, who is the Antichrist. Now we have a second beast. This is the false prophet. It had two horns like a lamb, and it spoke like a dragon. Now, through this Revelation study, we've been saying that use common sense, right? Use logic. Think about things and compare them to information that you already know, that you already have. So this false prophet has two horns like a lamb. Well, who is the lamb? Jesus, right? So this false prophet looks good, looks nice, looks kind, looks like Jesus, but it speaks like a dragon. Who is the dragon? The devil. So the false prophet has a nice appearance, looks welcoming, looks right, correct? Looks right, but speaks wrong, but speaks evil. This is pretty much how all false religions or all false truths appear. Something tells you, we are the truth. We are the voice. You should listen to us. They're always going to look right. Right? That's what draws people in. This looks right, but it doesn't sound right. When you hear the words, the words betray them. Nobody follows after things that look evil. Right? If it looks evil, that's your first clue. So false teachers, false prophets always look good. That's why we study this book. That's why we study Revelation. And don't even just listen to me. Please, don't listen to me. Don't, don't take my words as truth. Study this book for yourself. Study your faith for yourself, and you will begin to recognize God's voice. You will begin to know God's voice. Verse 12 says, It exercises all the authority of the first beast in its presence and makes the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast. So the false prophet makes everyone worship the Antichrist, whose mortal wound was healed. Remember when we talked last week how the Antichrist received a mortal wound, probably died, and came back to life. Verse 13, it performs great signs, even making fire come down from heaven to earth in front of people. So this false prophet not only looks like a Jesus type of figure, but also performs miracles like a Jesus type of figure. He's not just a persuasive speaker. You know, I think Critics now will say, well, who's going to be fooled by the Antichrist? I would never be fooled. I'd never be fooled by the false prophet. Yeah, but this, the Bible says that they're going to, it's going to look right and, and they're going to perform miracles. So I think a lot of people would be convinced. If you saw somebody on YouTube right now that could command fire to come down from heaven, I think you'd agree. A lot of people in this world would dial in. A lot of people in this world would obey. They would follow, wouldn't they? Verse 14, and by the signs that is allowed to work in the presence of the beast, it deceives those who dwell on earth, telling them to make an image for the beast that was wounded by the sword and yet lived. And it was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast, 
so that the image of the beast might even speak and might cause those who would not worship the image of the beast to be slain. So the false prophet tells the world to worship the Antichrist, and then he says, let's make a statue of the Antichrist, right? Let's make a false image. Let's make, let's make, a, let's make a fake thing. Let's build something. Now, this could be anything. It could be a statue. It could be a robot. It could be a clone, right? Who knows? Verse 15 says, and it was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast. What does that mean? It means the false prophet makes this statue, makes this robot thing come alive, and it breathes, and it talks. And when this thing talks, when this automaton talks, it says, worship me, or you will be killed. Verse 16, also, It causes both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead, so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark, that is, the name of the beast, or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. So, now... Some would believe that this talking statue is living in the temple, in the Holy Land. There's this passage about uh, an abomination that stands in the temple in the book of Daniel. And so uh, those who study these scriptures, these books of prophecy, they think that these two things correlate. That this um, statue of the Antichrist is actually constructed in the temple. And it tells everyone to receive a mark on their hand or on their forehead. And somehow... This mark has something to do with buying and selling. It has to do with um, your identity. And because you can't buy or sell without it, people get it. So it's some sort of um, tracking ID, right? It's your new form of identification that will allow them to trade, sell, experience commerce, And it would be unforgeable, untradeable, uncopyable, unstealable. You're moving there, right? You're moving there. Think about uh, how we're all moving towards a cashless society, right? Cash is going away. And we may not have a mark on our wrist, but we certainly might have a smartwatch. You have an Apple Watch. You can pay for things with your Apple Watch. Right? It has all your ID on it. You might even have a Fitbit. What, and the Fitbit certainly doesn't uh, have cash on it, but your Fitbit does what? It has GPS, tracks your location. It monitors your heart, your life. Where does all that data go? I'm not saying we're close to Revelation 13. I'm not saying we're close to Revelation 13. I'm not even saying it's around the corner. Probably isn't but we are on our way. So we read this book and we study this book, not to scare us, okay? Not, or, or not to point fingers and say, oh, there's the Antichrist, there's the Antichrist, there's the Antichrist, and that's not why. Like I said, chances are, none of this is gonna happen in our lifetime, more than likely. It's not gonna happen in our lifetime, but we read this to be aware, to know, and to recognize truth, to recognize the voice of Jesus Christ. John 10, 27, Jesus says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. That's our job, to follow, to follow our Messiah, to know the difference between the lamb and the dragon, no matter what they look like. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.